tonight. Lars and Celia are struggling in the Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather from the tin for June 19th. Right now, there are two tropical cyclones active, Blas and Celia, which we've become accustomed to over the last few days. They were the 29th and 30th tropical storms of the year so far, and it's keeping us in code blue in our state of readiness right now. Celia down to a depression and really looking sorry for itself, Blas starting to lose its way as well out in the eastern Pacific, moving out to sea. The Atlantic, though, doesn't have anything to talk about right now. There are no areas of interest active on day 19 of Atlantic hurricane season. All we've had so far is Alex, and that might surprise some people by now that we're still at only one storm, but that is pretty normal. In the eastern Pacific on day 36 of hurricane season, Blas moving northwestwards there, tropical storm strength still, and Celia down to a tropical depression just along the coast of uh, uh, the Central American continent. Uh, I think El Salvador or Guatemala definitely and in the Western Pacific nothing active here right now either uh, although we are getting some indications that things will start to liven up maybe at the end of the month certainly that's what happens usually on a climatological level we'll see North Indian Ocean though is very quiet nothing going on here and on the climatological level that is normal and we don't expect to see hardly anything happen here during the summer months here in the Northern Hemisphere. Two tropical storms have formed so far in this basin in 2022. Well, here are the culprits that we're looking at right now. Uh, Blas looking somewhat sorry for itself on the left-hand side with a partially exposed center of circulation and Celia looking so bad that it's very difficult to get a center fix on it anymore, uh, just located off the coast of Central America, as I mentioned before. Um, of course, they'll deliver locally heavy rainfall, although it's not expected to be particularly uh, high certainly in comparison to storms like Agatha uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Satellite imagery right now shows a fairly quiet Atlantic, little swirl going on there in the western Atlantic but that's not going to become anything. And the storms blowing up over Florida right now and the general monsoonal type activity over Central America. Some of it's due with Celia. In the Eastern Pacific then, of course, you can see the two main features, Blas and Celia, um, dry air even encroaching um, not too far from where those storms are, and uh, Blas really being the uh, forefront of uh, the moisture that's extending out over that massive dry air pool in the open Eastern Pacific. Westpac looking very quiet, not much to speak about at all here, uh, just a few little blow-ups uh, and the front moving across southern China as you'd expect at this time of year. A little bit of blow up towards the uh, bottom end of it, but it's nothing that's going to spin up into a tropical cyclone, at least not yet. That might happen later on. In the Indian Ocean, things remain quiet here too. Uh, as you can see, a little bit blowing up in the Bay of Bengal, but nothing out of the ordinary at all. Um, Southern Hemisphere looking fairly quiet, one or two little tiny bits of rotation maybe you could say. Uh, and in the Southern Hemisphere you've got a frontal trough blowing up there um, towards the Van, uh, yeah, Vanuatu and uh, New Caledonia. It's hard for me to see on this because I'm not actually looking at proper imagery when I'm doing this duration, I have to look to another screen. But there we have it. Sea surface temperatures though are still Starting to uh, increase again in the Eastern Pacific, um, getting still to around 30 degrees Celsius. The Atlantic looking decent with temperatures well up to 28 degrees, one or two little pockets of 30 along the Gulf Coast. Western Atlantic really picking up steam as well. So not going to be an issue for sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic once again this year. It is going to be above average in the areas that count. Looking towards the Eastern Hemisphere and you can see the Indian Ocean 
uh, still very warm, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. South China Sea, slightly hit and miss, but still decent temperatures, but particularly towards the Philippine Islands, extending outwards over the Philippine Sea at around that 15, 20 degree uh, latitude sweet spot that those temperatures seem to perform best. And further north, the 26 degree isotherm just about to reach uh, the southern islands of Japan, the main islands that is, Kyushu and beyond. So not looking too bad there. Sea surface temperature anomalies show that we are still uh, half and half really. The Western Pacific above average, Eastern Pacific in the La Nina below average. North Atlantic uh, a little bit uh, between the two but generally above average especially in the Gulf of Mexico but the Western Caribbean a little bit below there. Maybe that might have been to do with uh, cloudiness in recent days and weeks. However, ocean heat content is really picking up in the Caribbean, uh, getting towards those light blues and greens uh, along with the loop current which has already been in the red for a little bit. East of Pacific though I'm afraid at looking extremely drab and lifeless when you look at OHC. Western Pacific though boiling hot once again and never fails even on an off year which is what we're expecting this year. Computer models, this is the GFS of course showing what we're expecting out of Lars and Celia over the next five days. This is the short range so you can see that Blas doesn't have much of a future but the GFS does give Celia a chance to re-intensify and it has done run after run getting towards hurricane status towards the end of that five day period as it moves off towards the west. Um, following in Blas's footsteps really, staying a decent, a decent area off the coast of Mexico just like Blas did a few days ago. This is what we're looking at for potential precipitation. This is over the seven day period so you can see those reds starting to uh, increase over the water there, that's generally Celia's path assuming it intensifies again. Uh, but look over the land areas we're expecting in the next seven days, maximums in uh, places like Guatemala into uh, Chiapas in Mexico, uh, approximately six inches of rain um, in hilly areas, but along the coast much less, but still could be a significant wet period again. Longer range, this is Celia, its second stint. Uh, and again, this is quite uncertain, reaching a significant Category 1 hurricane there and trying to get towards the Baja California Peninsula, but ultimately failing and diving off towards the uh, west. Uh, whether this happens or not, again, unknown really, uh, because there's not much left of Celia right now as it is. So will it even be a thing by the time it gets there? We'll have to wait and see. In the medium range, the Western Pacific is also throwing out a little bit of a bone, potential tropical cyclone formation towards the end of that 10 day period. This is day 5 to 10 that we're looking at now. And there it is, right off the Philippine coast on day 9 and 10. Too far out to have any kind of certainty on. We've not marked it as any percentage, uh, and we probably won't for several days yet. This model run will have to be fairly consistent if we're going to start to watch this one closely. All the serious stuff is done, so at this point you can take a look at this barcode and scan it to take a look at the Force 13 store. We uh, still have our usual merch selection, but we also now take on animation requests of all kinds. Take a look. And into the silly range, you can see what else happens in the Western Pacific out of that next system becoming a significant typhoon, possibly Category 4 there, striking Taiwan and then moving into China as a strong tropical storm. And then the model gives out towards the end of that loop there. So very long range for that to happen, but you can never underestimate the Western Pacific. Um, the rule of it only takes one really applies even more strongly over in that part of the world. There is much more ocean, much more areas that storms can uh, can hit uh, and much more heat potential even if uh, things have started a little bit quietly. Meanwhile on June 19th 1972 whilst it wasn't the strongest of storms it was extremely catastrophic for parts of the northeastern United States but Agnes was peaking as a category one on this day before its, ori uh, before its original landfall or initial area of moving over land in the Florida Panhandle. To its east, Tropical Depression 3 it was being tagged as well, a weak Tropical Depression that didn't do much over the course of the next two days as it moved towards Bermuda. Agnes was a dis very destructive 
and Deadly Storm. I don't remember the statistics, but uh, certainly up there in terms of Northeastern uh, statistics in the US. So the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Bonnie in the Eastern Pacific. The next name now is Darby in the Central Pacific. Guess what? We're still waiting for Hone, and I think it's going to be a while yet. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Chaba, and in the North Indian Ocean, we're waiting still for Citran. And once again, we could be waiting a while there. 30 storms so far this year, which is possibly slightly below average. We're a little bit below average on Ace. The next name in the Australian region is Darien. Southwest Indian Ocean, Let Lama if it's in the next 11 days. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Harley. That's all for tonight. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow.